As uh, Dr. Good said, I'm mostly responsible for export of live animals, semen and embryos to the European Union, <clears throat> Australia and New Zealand, but I also work very closely with other industries such as certified CEPA services in particular with uh, inspection and approval of centers for export. And as you all probably know, certainly from coming to industry meetings like this or state and industry meetings in the USAHA, that there's a long history of federal state industry cooperation, um, such as our eradication programs, our secretaries advisory committees, USHA, this organization. Um, there's a long list of them. These are just the ones that I'm mostly familiar with. Our main industry partners for export are CSS, the American Embryo Transfer Association. We work closely with the uh, Livestock Exporters Association and USLGE, our U.S. Livestock Genetics Export. These uh, organizations help us do a better job because they often serve as our technical sources. Uh, I consider myself a generalist. I have to be able to negotiate and develop protocols from everything from oyster larvae to elephants. I mean, literally, and anything in between. And we do a lot of live cattle, semen, and embryos, but I've been asked to do everything from soup to nuts. And when I have a particular question, I go to somebody like Dr. Good because he is my, he, he is our expert. So we do work very closely with our industry. Uh, we have annual meetings with a lot of these people, such as USLGE, LEA, and uh, CSS, and they help us with our training courses. For instance, back in June 2015, uh, AETA and uh, Select Breeders, which is an equine semen collection center, helped us provide training to our veterinary medical officers. Um, they were present there, and we are going to be giving a uh, similar training course in May in Madison, Wisconsin, and CSS and American Embryo Transfer Association are going to be present and partner with us in training our, our veterinary medical officers. <clears throat> An example, quick example, is what we've done with the AETA recently in January in Wisconsin. We had a group of Australians coming to assess our IVF industry because they are interested in opening the export market for IVF embryos, so they came. We took them around in the freezing cold Wisconsin weather and uh, showed them what we have. Uh, we have incredibly um, uh, stellar IVF type of laboratories in, in Wisconsin in particular. And um, what we're hanging our hat on is we're going to be proposing to them that uh, veterinarians who collect embryos for export are, are AETA certified. Um, and we had AETA representatives accompany us on that trip. Um, the bulk of my, pro of my presentation is going to be on the um, lessons learned from both the industry, I hope, and my perspective representing APHIS um, through some recent negotiations that we had with CSS. We have had a, a memorandum of a understanding or an MOU with CSS since 1999. It was originally developed um, to qualify semen used to create embryos for export to the EU, but it's, it morphed since then over to um, CSS conducting a lot of inspections and qualifying centers for export. We were supposed to renegotiate every five years. It wasn't necessarily renegotiated every five years, but our latest was done and started in 2012. And uh, this ne renegotiation, we were reviewing the scope of authority that CSS had to inspect on our behalf. And it, it, it was um, sensitive at times, um, heated at times. Um, there was a big discussion about who is supposed to really do these inspections. Is it supposed to be an APHIS veterinarian or can CSS do it on our behalf? And a lot of it had to do with how we interpret uh, the certification statements. These are some, sim some examples of certification statements. And when it says something like approved by the competent authority, can we in fact allow CSS to inspect on our behalf if it, if it says literally by the competent authority? So there was a lot of discussion going on. Um, does the MOU between APHIS and CSS give us the authority to allow them to do that on our behalf? 
Um, there were a lot of challenges on both sides. We were b looking for a balance. Um, APHIS is, was challenged by what our expectations and our obligations to our trading partners. Um, and accountability, was the MOU legal, uh, could, could we, de is it defensible? Could we say to our trading partners, we are allowing a private for-profit or industry organization to inspect on our behalf? Um, also, the world was moving towards the OIE, and CSS is very similar to the OIE, but not necessarily equivalent. CSS, on the other hand, um, they, they said to us, which had a lot of merit, um, we've been doing this for years, so why are you changing it now? So um, <clears throat> there was uh, some suggestions, which I've heard here, this theme um, through some of the, um, a lot of the, all of the um, presentations that I've heard today about government overreach, you know, the, oh, the government is coming to get us, why are you coming to get us, uh, leave us alone, we don't want over regulation. And also, as I said, it, you know, it affected their bottom line, and we were not interested in, in you know, uh, negatively affecting them, but we did, in fact, have to discuss among ourselves, could we do this, and, and, and if so, in what way? Uh, we did come up with four options, and, and this was over a long period of negotiation and conversation um, between our two organizations. Uh, there were four options, which is either APHIS-only ins inspections, such as we do for the European Union and New Zealand, an initial APHIS inspection followed by an annual CSS inspection, CSS-only, and no inspection at all. And this, again, goes back to what does it mean what, what do those certification statements mean? So for 12% of them, it might say something like, was inspected by an APHIS veterinarian. That's very specific as compared to it was approved by APHIS. Uh, the initial APHIS inspection, those are the ones that are a little bit more approved by the competent authority or officially approved. Uh, CSS only, which is the bulk of our um, protocols because we have specifically and purposefully negotiated protocols to say that the donors met the minimum health requirements of the certified semen services because then that would enable us to allow them clearly to inspect on our behalf. And then there are some some older um, protocols of which that don't even mention the word inspection and approval. So, okay, if that's what the importing country uh, expects, that's all right with us. Um, I did participate in a a uh, project called the Quads Germplasm Comparison Project in 2014 and 15. The Quads are the United States, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. We're a, uh, it's a group where it's, um, we're, it's a cooperative organization where we try to discuss trade among ourselves and also try to influence um, <clears throat> international uh, animal health issues. And uh, we compared all four countries' programs for inspection and approval of semen and embryos uh, against the OIE code just as a way of comparing apples to apples. And what we did find through site visits, we went, I went to all four, or we all went to all four countries, was that Australia, New Zealand, and Canada, they're very prescriptive, they're very OIE based, they have formal official programs. The U.S., really less prescribed, that's part of our culture is, is, you know, less is more. We don't want as much government intrusion. Uh, we do depend um, on CSS. And New Zealand uh, also uses a third-party verifier system similar to using CSS. The difference there was that uh, their auditors are ISO trained and they, they have a very vigorous audit, the auditor program. Um, <clears throat> What again, what we did find was that the CSS, they set our domestic program. They are the standard bearing organization that defines our U.S. domestic standards. If you compare that again to the international guidelines, um, they're similar but not identical. So a lot of protocols, a lot of people throw out the words that the semen was collected, processed, and stored in accordance with the OIE code. Well, what does that mean? You know, we really, are you going to take that literally or not? Because you can't exactly compare the two. Um, one of the things that came out of the quads germplasm 
were, they made some recommendation. They asked us to look again at the scope of the CSS role in, uh, of inspection on our behalf, uh, define our role when issues are identified, some non-compliance, what is our role if CSS finds things, and define our scope of oversight. And we have, through um, our, our very hard work together as, as a team, uh, met and addressed a lot of these issues already. Uh, one of the things that we did find was uh, we had to provide some more training to our people. Um, some people, like the, our big, big centers in Wisconsin, those inspectors, they're trained, they do it all the time, they're very knowledgeable. A lot of the other ones for, say, small custom centers in, in the west or down south, uh, they may inspect once a year. They may or may not have any experience. And so what CSS was telling us is, your inspectors don't know anything, so why are you wanting them to inspect instead of us? If, you're, if they're going to do it, you need to train them, and they were right. So we are moving towards doing some more training. We developed uh, a checklist together cooperatively, and also um, we are encouraging CSS to, to follow up, and I'll, I'll get into that a bit. Uh, we developed a, ch a checklist. Uh, again, it, uh, it was a cooperative thing. There were things that that I wanted in it. Sia said, no, it's not practical. It's not, you know, it's not implementable. I said, okay. So again, we're very, I think both sides are happy with this checklist. It is going to be um, incorporated into CSS's um, inspection for export. Um, one of the light bulb moments that I personally had is we, um, part of the MOU always said that we can go to CSS headquarters and look at their records. Well, nobody ever did. So we did. We In October 2015, I went with one of my colleagues, as well as Dr. Rick Hill, who was a, in a VS management. And um, at that meeting, CSS gave us an overview of their program, their goals, the history of their program. And it was really interesting, and I really think it was a turning point in our relationship because it, it helped us to understand where they were coming from, and I think it helped them, hopefully, to understand where we were coming from. Uh, we looked through all their records. I was highly impressed with their service center, or their service director, Dr. Mitchell, with his, or Mr. Jer Mitchell, with his knowledge and scope of experience. And, you know, we looked, there were some common themes that we saw that um, I felt needed to be addressed to beef up his inspections, and so there was a lot of uh, really good work done during that meeting. Um, again, uh, understanding the differences in perspective. CSS really focuses on semen quality, semen identification, and sire health. That's their role. They are the, a standard um, organization, setting organization in the U.S. They had an AI center practice evaluation, but it was a voluntary sort of secondary thing, and we've encouraged them, and they have, in fact, made this now part of their program. It's no longer voluntary. And their perspective, which really I didn't understand before I went to this meeting, was that they would really like prefer to keep a, a center in the program, to say, let me help you get better, rather than say, you didn't meet this checklist, <laughs> off with your head, right? So um, don't laugh, <laughs> because that's, you know, that's what some of our trading partners want, the European Union in particular. If you've ever been through a, an EU uh, audit, that's what they want us to do. Okay? So our perspective, again, focuses on biosecurity, infrastructure, facility management, separation of animal health, of animals of different health status. And as a regulatory organization, we have to have a red line. Because if we have or don't have a red line, meaning... You either make the cut or you don't, then it means nothing. It, it means nothing, and we can't sell it to our trading partners. So we had to explain, look, you know, we want to work with you, but you can't just have a place that's, you know, not meeting the standards and say, well, let me just keep working with you, but in the meantime, you can keep exporting. Because, you know, it didn't meet our needs, and, and what it really was... Um, was concerning is that it could actually affect our entire export market because we have to be able to sell from a regulatory standpoint that when we say something's inspected and approved, it, it, there's a certain set of standards and we meet it. So those kind of 
uh, conversations went on. Um, again, just quickly here, we don't feel that compliance is voluntary. You either are doing it or you're not doing. However, we don't want to do off with your head either because that's what the European Union does. We, we don't want to go there. I, we strongly believe, I strongly believe, that when you're going in and doing an inspection, you have to use your judgment. You have to say, well, they didn't meet this, but they met this. Or maybe they didn't meet this and they, they sort of met it. And then, okay, then we need to stop your exports. Um, so, again, it's, it is a judgment call. It's not black and white always. But we do have to maintain our credibility. And, um, and maintain our market access. Um, I, I do believe, especially within the last year, that both sides are moving towards the middle. As I said before, CSS amended their participation agreement to make the AI um, Center Animal Management Evaluation no longer voluntary. They incorporate the generic checklist that we both feel comfortable with for export purposes. APHIS has agreed to do training. For instance, what I said about our May course, I'm developing training modules for bovine embryo inspection and some checklists. And we're also, I'm uh, closely working with Mr. Mitchell on a lot of co-inspections. As a matter of fact, I'm leaving here tomorrow to go to, um, to do a re-inspection with Mr. Mitchell on a center that we um, discontinue their authorization to export until they made some changes. They have, in fact, made the changes. So this is, this is all a really good thing, and I believe that um, APHIS has learned a lot. I think CSS has learned a lot. We've listened to each other. We've learned how to trust each other and respect each other and work together to make this work. And we are, APHIS is really committed to, to making this type of program work with the industry where um, <clears throat> if there are little blips in the road, we're going to talk to you, we're going to find a common ground, and um, we're going to promote our industry, and we're going to be able to defend it to our trading partners. And so um, I think it, it has been a... a a really good experience and a learning experience for both of us. And I think it's a win-win.